Okay, welcome to GADEPS. Uh, today uh, we have uh, Michelle Artebani who is uh, going to talk about Cox ring of uh, K3 surfaces. So please, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you a lot for, for the invitation. Um, so my talk will be about a subject in algebraic geometry. Um, so I will talk about Cox rings of uh, a special class of surfaces, which are K3 surfaces. Um, I, I don't want to study immediately with the definition of, uh, of the ring because it is uh, a bit technical. For the moment, uh, let me just say that, uh, so uh, given some uh, X uh, projective variety, uh, let's say over the complex numbers, uh, it is possible under some uh, further conditions I will explain later, it is possible to associate to it some ring, which is uh, the Cox ring, which is uh, uh, actually um, C graded, um, sorry, a graded C algebra. And uh, as, as I will try to explain, um, this is a this is this is a, an algebraic object which is uh, quite uh, meaningful from the geometrical point of view because in some sense it encodes all possible maps from the variety to projective space. Uh, so to start with, I, I will not talk about geometry. I will just um, introduce some language on uh, graded algebras and some basic uh, facts which will be useful later. So let me start with some. Uh, preliminaries on graded algebras. So assume that K is some uh, uh, finitely generated uh, abelian group. Um, so what is a K graded algebra? So it is, uh, we'll assume it to be over the complex numbers to simplify. Um, so it is a, a, an associative commutative algebra over C. We assume it, uh, it has unit and it has uh, no zero divisor, so it is an integral uh, algebra. And uh, it has a decomposition as a direct sum of uh, certain uh, vector spaces, RW, indexed by the, the abelian group K. So these RW are uh, vector subspaces of R. And uh, moreover, uh, the multiplication, let's say, respects the grading. So if I multiply an element in the in RW with an element in RW prime, uh, this is contained in RW uh, plus W prime. So these um, uh, vector subspaces RW are called the homogeneous uh, pieces of the graded algebra. And uh, so let's say this uh, homogeneous. part or piece, let's say. And uh, if I have an element here, we say it is homogeneous, and we will say that W is the degree of the element. OK, so to introduce some, some language. OK, so probably the easiest example you can think of is uh, just take um, k equal to z and just take r the polynomial ring a polynomial ring let's say some variables and so you can decompose it as a direct sum of uh, the vector spaces of polynomial of a given so degree less or equal to d let's say Okay, you can take this, so grade it according to the degree, the usual degree of, of polynomials. And um, in this case, of course, if you, if you uh, multiply, you respect the degree. And, um, and well, so this is, this is an easy example of, of this. So it, it respects all the properties we, we put before. Okay. So given a graded algebra over the complex numbers, there are, we can associate to it a monoid, a submonoid of K and a cone. So the monoid is called the weight monoid, is uh, given by the set of uh, 
elements of K such that the associated homogeneous piece is not the zero uh, vector space. In the previous example of, uh, of the complex, the polynomial ring, for example, this weight monoid is given by the natural numbers, including zero, okay? because we have uh, just polynomials of uh, non-negative degree. Uh, the fact that it is a monoid, you can easily realize that it, uh, it follows from the fact that the algebra uh, has no zero divisors. Okay, so if I take two and uh, they are non-zero, the, uh, the product is contained uh, in uh, the homogeneous piece whose uh, degree is the sum, and this is also non-zero. The other object we can associate is a, a, a cone. I take uh, the abelian group uh, tensor Q. So I, let's say, embed it in a vector space. And I take the convex cone generated by the weight monoid. So this is called the weight cone of the associated to the graded algebra. So of course, there are some very uh, basic questions one can pose around these, these algebras. Uh, the first one is uh, um, understand when, for example, the algebra is finitely generated. Uh, and the second one is that, uh, assume we know it is uh, finitely generated, can we determine a presentation of the algebra? Or at least say something, for example, uh, about the degrees of a generating set of the algebra. And uh, there is one uh, easy, quite, quite easy remark that one can do in this setting, which is the following. Um, assume that uh, the algebra is finitely generated as an algebra. Then uh, this implies that the weight monoid is finitely generated as a monoid. And moreover, this implies um, also that a certain uh, group I define in a moment is finite. What is this group? So if one takes the algebra, the graded algebra R, and one takes the automorphism of it as a graded algebra, I didn't define it, but you can imagine they are automorphism of the algebra, uh, which preserve, let's say, the, the decomposition into homogeneous pieces, and such that uh, the induced, there is an induced map uh, on the grading group is also a uh, homomorphism. So this is a... Um, an automorphism of the graded algebra. Um, so there is a, a natural morphine from this group to the group of automorphism of the uh, grading group and also of the weight monoid, because as I said, they induce an action on the degrees. And I call out R bar the image of this map. So it turns out that if the weight monoid is finitely generated, then this group is finite. This is a very general fact. Let me um, give an idea of, of the proof of these arrows. It's probably you, it's not difficult to, to imagine the reason, but let me just give a sketch. Uh, for example, uh, why uh, is it true that if the, al the, if the graded algebra is finitely generated, then the weight monoid is, uh, is finitely generated? Well, this is because um, uh, so first of all, um, we can always assume that uh, um, a generating set is given by homogeneous uh, elements. So let's take a set, a finite set of homogeneous generators. Let's call them F1, Fr. So since they are homogeneous, they live in some homogeneous piece. So each of them has some degree, Wi. So what happens is that their degrees generate the weight monoid. And the reason, if you think to, the, to it, is quite simple. So if I take any W in the weight monoid, so by definition of weight monoid, there exists some F non-zero in, in the corresponding homogeneous piece. And this F uh, uh, can be written as a polynomial uh, with complex coefficient in F1, Fr, since they generate the, the algebra. Okay, but now if one compares, uh, let's say, F 
with uh, one of, let's say, the first monomial in this, in this uh, polynomial uh, and compares the degrees, one realizes that the, the degree of f, which is w, is equal uh, a linear of, uh, to a linear combination with no negative uh, integer coefficients of the degrees uh, y1, yr. And these coefficients are just the exponents of the monomial. So these degrees generate the monoid. Okay, this explains the first uh, arrow. And for the second arrow, it requires a little bit more <clears throat> uh, theory, but uh, mm, the point is that if the weight monoid is finitely generated, then of course the cone generated by it uh, is rational polyhedral. And uh, which means it is a cone, convex cone, generated by finitely many um, rays, let's say vectors. And uh, if one calls uh, U1, Us, these, uh, the generators in K of these uh, rays, then one can realize that um, there is a finite um, set of elements in K which generates uh, the intersection of the cone with the, with the group and uh, which is invariant for this group. So maybe the picture is, is, uh, helps understanding this. So in this case, uh, for example, take the, uh, the B-dimensional cone generated by the vex vectors 1, 3, and 3, 2. If one, if one looks at all, uh, so the points in K are the, the, the black dots. If one wants to generate all these points, uh, this is a, a, a monoid again, uh, it is enough actually to look at those living in this region, the ones appearing in the picture. Okay, and uh, this is a finite set uh, generates uh, this intersection, and of course is also invariant for this uh, for this uh, group of uh, of automorphism. And so, um, uh, since this group must preserve this finite set, and uh, it is the identity if it. Uh, it is, if it is the identity on this set, then we obtain that this group is finite. Okay, this is well, this is written more in detail here, but this is just the this is the idea. Okay, it takes on a finite set which generates this this intersection, and so it is finite. Okay, so this this uh, these are the basic facts I wanted to um, to say about graded algebras. Um, so let me go now to, uh, to geometry. So let's see. Uh, so what is the Cox ring um, of a projective variety? Well, here I put the more general uh, hypothesis, but if you, if you want, uh, for, for this talk actually, it is enough to think that X is a smooth projective surface over C, okay? So just replace the hypothesis with this if, if it is too, uh, too much. Um, so I need to assume that uh, uh, the divisor class group of the variety is finitely generated. So I recall, what is the divisor class group? The divisor class group is the following. So one takes uh, the group of uh, vile divisors on the variety. So if X is a smooth projective surface, uh, these are just formal uh, linear combinations of uh, uh, curves on the, on the surface. When I say curve, I, I'm thinking of, a, of an integral uh, curve on the surface. Uh, and I take the quotient of this. So this is the free group over the, the curves. Uh, linear um, um, an equivalence relation, which is called linear equivalence, which is defined as follows. We have that two divisors are linear equivalent if and only if there exists some rational function on the variety such that uh, the difference of the two is equal to the divisor of this rational function. So there is... Um, so now I, I don't know how much um, background do you have in algebraic geometry. Anyway, if, if you have some rational function on the, on the variety, 
uh, it is uh, enough it to be normal. Then uh, um, you can uh, consider a divisor associated to it, which essentially uh, gives uh, the, the curves where the uh, rational function assumes either zeros or poles with a certain multiplicity. Okay, so we can associate to F uh, a linear combination of curves in the surface with certain uh, coefficients, which are either positive or negative according whether they are um, zeros or poles. And this defines an equivalent relation. And the quotient by this um, is called the divisor class group uh, or Picard group in case the actually it is isomorphic variety is, uh, is mode. Here, we need to assume this group to be finitely generated, which is not always the case. Uh, and this is really needed. And also to simplify the definition of the ring, I assume it to be free. But this hypothesis is not really necessary. It's just to simplify the, uh, the definition. Um, so in, we are thinking that in our case, the divisor class group is just some z to the, to the r as a group. Now, um, to define this Cox ring, we need to take uh, a subgroup of uh, uh, vial divisors such that the map which takes the divisor to its class, to its uh, linear equivalence class, is an isomorphism. In other words, I choose representatives for um, classes in the divisor class group in a coherent way, so such that the map is, a, is an isomorphism. Okay. So with these ingredients, I define a certain graded uh, algebra associated to X, which is an algebra graded over K, so over the uh, divisor class group. And what are the homogeneous pieces? Given D um, in K, we take the vector space uh, appearing here. And this is what is usually called the Riemann rock space associated to the divisor. Let me recall its definition. It contains all rational functions, no zero, such that the divisor of F plus D is an effective divisor. That is, it is a, a linear combination of curves with whose coefficients are all uh, non-negative integers. Okay, so it is a vector space. And I take the direct sum over all these uh, all these spaces. Okay, so um, well, it is known that uh, this space here is related to the linear system, which is called the linear system associated to D. So actually, it is just its projectivization, and this linear system is essentially consists of all um, divisors, effective divisors which are linear equivalent to, to D. So this uh, object, which is called Cox ring, uh, encodes in some, say, in some sense all um, contains information about all possible linear systems uh, on, the, on the variety. And this linear system gives rise to maps into projective space. So it is a, a, a fundamental object for the geometry of, uh, of the variety. Uh, I will give one more motivation, more, more precise motivation um, in a moment. Um, one important remark is that in this case, if one takes the weight cone associated to this uh, uh, graded ring, this is just what is called the effective cone of the, of the variety. Okay, because this uh, uh, Riemann rock space is non-zero exactly when I have some um, non zero f there. Sorry, to have a vector space here, I should add zero. So it is non zero exactly when I have some f here. And this means that uh, I have some effective divisor linear equivalent to D. Okay, so the, the, the weight monoid, let's say, corresponds to classes of effective divisors. And the weight cone is what is, co what is called the effective cone of the of the variety. So as a consequence of the um, preliminary lemma I gave before, we, uh, we get an, an interesting fact. So um, assume 
that the Cox ring of, uh, of uh, the variety of the surface, if you want, is finitely generated as an algebra, then we immediately obtain by this lemma I mentioned before that the effective cone of the variety is polyhedral. Okay, this is a necessary condition. Um, observe that variety such that the Cox ring is finitely generated are called uh, uh, Moridrin spaces. So the reason for, for this name is quite um, deep and involves uh, uh, birational geometry. Essentially, um, it comes from, it was given by Uwe Kiel uh, in 1990, I think. Uh, and the reason for calling them in this way is that uh, one can see that the minimal model program works uh, especially well for this kind of of, uh, of varieties, okay? But uh, this is not really um, interesting in the case of surfaces, so I, I'm not going into that, but just to, to give an idea of, of the origin of this, of this name. Um, so another important reason why this, this uh, uh, ring is interesting is the following. So it can be seen that the fact that R of X uh, is graded by K implies that if one takes, uh, assume, assume now, sorry, that it is finitely generated, implies that if one takes the spectrum of the ring, so this is an affine uh, variety associated to it, then um, it carries an action of a, of a torus. Okay, in, the, in our hypothesis, this torus is, jumps, is some C star to rho, where rho is the rank of the divisor class group. Okay, so let me write it here. So the fact that R of X is uh, K graded and K is isomorphic to CL of X implies that uh, its spectrum is acted by uh, this uh, group which is a torus. Okay, this is a fundamental fact, again, about graded algebra. I'm not going to, to, to enter the details of this, but this is the point. And uh, the nice thing is that uh, uh, if uh, there is a certain open subset in this uh, affine uh, variety, such that um, if one takes a, a, a quotient, a good quotient of this open subset by the action of this uh, torus, uh, the quotient is the, the, the original variety. Okay, this is a very strong uh, uh, property. And um, the easiest uh, example of this, uh, let me give it as a basic motivation. So if I take just uh, as X the let's say n-dimensional projective space, then one can prove that R of X is just the polynomial ring in n plus one variables. And uh, in this case, if one takes the spectrum, the spectrum is C to the n plus one. And uh, the torus is uh, C star because uh, the divisor class group in this case, it is known to be Z. Uh, so there is an action here of C star. And in this case, uh, I just leave out zero. So this is the open subset. And uh, I can take a quotient by the action of C star and I get back the projective space. Okay, this uh, standard construction of the projective space actually uh, holds. Um, so there is a similar construction for all uh, Moridri spaces. Okay, so this is very interesting. Uh, a very interesting fact. Okay, well, let me just say that um, important classical examples of modern spaces are toric varieties, for those who, who know, and the Fano varieties, that is varieties with ample anti-canonical class. In this talk, I will uh, now concentrate on um, K3 surfaces. So I recall what is a K3 surface, well, a smooth, compact, complex surface, uh, which is simply connected and with a nowhere vanishing holomorphic two form. Uh, equivalently, uh, the canonical divisor is linear equivalent to zero. 
Um, well, let's say an important fact is, is that the divisor class group in this case has the structure of a lattice. That is, uh, it is a free, uh, finitely generated abelian group. Uh, and the intersection product on the surface defines a symmetric uh, bilinear form on it with values in Z. So we have this uh, intersection form on the on the surface. So um, uh, given any K3 surface, which can actually associate to it uh, a matrix, which describes the um, intersection product on, on its divisor class group. Uh, well, and what follows will denote by rho of x uh, the Picard number of the surface that is the rank of the uh, divisor class group. So this surface satisfies the hypothesis to define the, the Cox ring, and we are interested, interested thus in the two problems I mentioned before. First, characterize when uh, the Cox ring is finitely generated, and secondly, compute it if possible, or at least give some idea on the degrees of the generators. So let me state a first uh, theorem. Uh, which gives a characterization of uh, Mori dream K3 surfaces. That is K3 surfaces with um, finitely generated Cox ring. So, and this says that um, it is equivalent, um, being Mori dream, it is equivalent to say that the effective cone is polyhedral and that the, or that the automorphism group of the surface is finite. Okay. Observe that um, because of this preliminary lemma, uh, we, we already uh, know that if uh, the Cox ring is finitely generated, then we know that the effective cone is polyhedral, I mentioned before. And we also know that uh, this group here is finite. Well, actually, uh, I'm not going, of course, into the proof of this, but um, it follows from the theory of K3 surface, actually, that the automorphism group of the surface is finite if and only if this induced group uh, is finite. Okay, so I'm not, I, I didn't prove this arrow, but it follows from this, uh, from this fact. And also one can prove that the converse uh, arrows um, hold in this, in this special case. Um, uh, Michelle, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. So this, in remark one, uh, these two numbers, I mean, the, this, there are two numbers, this is the, the cardinality of auto x and the other cardinality. Are they, are they related also? Um, yes, they are related, but they are not equal, so it could be that they are different. Yes. So, um, Yes, it's it's not it's not immediate the, the, the answer, but uh, they are related. Yes, but uh, they are not equal. They could be different. Yes, okay. yes. Um, okay, and um, yes, I, I probably the answer would, would would take too long. So maybe we can discuss uh, uh, later. Okay. okay. Yes. So it really depends on the on the theory. One is good to go more deeply into the theory of K3 surface to understand this this uh, this better. Um, let me say also that uh, if one of the condition of the equivalent condition of the theorem holds and uh, assume that the Picard number is at least three, so the cases one and two are a bit special, then uh, the streamer rays of the, of the effective cone, which which uh, I said that it is a uh, uh, polyhedral cone, so generated by finitely many vectors, uh, are known, and they are classes uh, of minus two curves. Uh, minus two curves are just smooth rational curves on the on the K3 surface. They are called minus two curves because their self-intersection is equal to minus two with respect to the intersection product. Um, so the, the polyhedrality of the effective cone in this case is also equivalent to say that the surface has finitely many minus two curves. Um, now, the good news about this is that um, K3 surfaces whose automorphism is finite uh, are known. Uh, actually, it is a classical, 
is the union of classical results. The results by Piatesky, Shafiro, Shafarevich, I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce it, Nikulin and Wimberg. They provided a complete classifications of them. Um, in particular, if the rank of the divisor class group is one, all of them are um, a finite automorphism group. And this is quite easy. If the rank is two, uh, it can be proved that um, the automorphism group is finite if and only if the divisor class group um, contains a class with self-intersection either zero or minus two. So if the quadratic, the quadratic form realizes either zero or minus two, and uh, in this case, there are infinitely many families of uh, K3 surfaces with this property. Uh, when the Picard number is between 3 and 19, on the other end, there are finitely many families of K3 surfaces with um, finite automorphism group. And when I say families, I mean uh, with a given um, uh, divisor class group together with the lattice structure. I mean, the classification consists in a list of matrices. Each matrix represents the, uh, some uh, divisor class group together with its uh, intersection product. And uh, it is known, again, by the theory of, uh, of K3 surfaces that there, are, uh, the, there is a family of uh, all family of K3 surface with that, with that uh, Picard, uh, with, with that Picard lattice, let's say. So when I say families, I mean with a given, with a fixed um, divisor class group as a lattice. To fix the lattice structure. And finally, for the maximal possible uh, Picard number, 20, there are no K3 surfaces with the finite automorphism group. Okay, so it is, there is this classification which is very, very explicit. Okay, so after this, the problem is uh, try to um, compute this, this ring in some way. Okay, understand its, its structure. And this turns out to be quite uh, difficult uh, in general. Um, let me say about the, this general problem of computing Cox ring. There is one um, easy uh, remark, which follows actually from again from the proof of this initial lemma. And uh, the, to say it uh, simply, um, the Cox ring needs generators in all degree uh, of a generating set of defective monoid, because we saw that. Um, to gen let's say, given a, a defective monoid is generated by the degrees of uh, a generating set. Okay, so I need to generate defective monoid. So I need I need uh, generators of the Cox ring which realize uh, a generating set of it. Uh, and this already gives some information. For example, it says that uh, all minus two curves give rise to generators of the, of the Cox ring in the sense that we need uh, one generator in each uh, degree corresponding to the class of a minus two curve. This is because their classes, essentially because they, are, they have negative self-intersection, uh, are contained in any generating set of defective monoid. They are, the, as I said before, they are the extremal, generate the extremal ray of the effective cone. So for this reason, they are, their degrees are needed. Okay. However, uh, it is not true that all generators uh, of, uh, of the Cox ring come in this way. So their degrees can be uh, different from uh, the degree of a minus, the class of a minus two curves. Other things can appear. Uh, what is known, what, what has been done in the case of surfaces, um, well, first of all, I didn't say that the, the varieties which are easiest uh, in this theory are toric varieties. And in the case of, the to of a toric variety, it is perfectly clear how to construct the Cox ring, and it is always a polynomial ring. And actually, it is an equivalence. The converse also holds. Um, 
Other classes uh, of varieties where we know the, the cox ring um, are, for example, del pezzo surfaces. In the case of del pezzo surfaces, there is a, um, a beautiful result by Batirev and Popov, uh, which uh, they, they found the generators of the cox ring. Uh, and essentially, it, they prove that uh, if the Picard number is at most eight, they correspond to minus one curves in that case. Um, after the work of Batirev and Popo, there are other papers by other people who actually explicitly computed the, uh, also the relations of the ring. So the ring, the Cox rings of the Pezzo surface uh, are completely known, uh, pres a full presentation. Uh, other example, in a joint work with um, Alice Garbagnati and Antonio Laface, we studied um, rational elliptic surfaces. Uh, that is uh, rational surfaces carrying an elliptic um, vibration. Uh, there can be proved to be more dream where they are extremal. So, which means that um, essentially, um, let's say the model vial of the, of the vibration is finite. So this is the condition to achieve that uh, the effective cone is, uh, is polyhedral. So with, let's say easiest with finitely many minus one curves is equivalent. Um, there are results on sea star surfaces, so uh, not toric, but again with the torus section by Hausen and Sus. And um, well, in a joint paper with uh, in the same paper I mentioned before, uh, with um, Antonio Laface and Jürgen Hausen, uh, we computed some examples uh, in the case of K3 surfaces. All of these techniques, I would say, are ad hoc techniques which really use the geometry, the specific property of the, of the surface. For example, the proof by Batirev and Popov was a kind of double induction on the number of points uh, blown up and uh, the intersection with the anti-canonical class. So very specific. And uh, so there is not really, there is no general technique, I would say, to compute the ring. So let me explain what, what we did. Um, in a joint work with uh, um, Antonio Laface and uh, Claudia Correa Deisler. Actually, this is part of the PhD thesis of uh, Claudia. Uh, one question. Are these examples uh, include uh, uh, examples of uh, surface of degree four and P3? So, or? Yeah, yes, so, yes, these are, um, well, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, um, many K3 surfaces have this, this type of, of model. Okay. So if you take a general one, of course, uh, the Picard number is one. And so um, it's just the homogeneous uh, coordinate ring of the, of the, of the surface. And, uh, but also we have, uh, of course, we have a web example with the higher Picard rank. Yes. Another thing, the computation of the Cox ring, for me, uh, you have to compute also the basis for the Picard uh, group or you don't need? You need, uh, yes, you start with the matrix. I see. So I mean, you start with the, with the matrix, and I, I will explain it uh, in a moment. You need to actually compute the effective cone. This okay. is what you need. Um, yes, in terms of this initial matrix you, you have. Okay. Yes. It is always in terms of this. Actually, in ter more in terms of this, not really of the, of the geometry. So you, you don't really start with, a, as you said, a, a, an equation of a K3 surface in some projective space. You start with the with the, with the matrix and you said, assume a K3 surface as this lattice, as a Picard lattice, and then you, you, you say something. Okay. So I imagine that you don't need the equations of the curves. Uh, no. It's just no. the topological data of the intersection matrix. And yes, yes. Okay, so together with Claudio Antonio, we prove the, the following uh, result. Let X be uh, any complex projective K3 surface. Uh, then what we can say is not, not we, we cannot find a presentation, but we can say something about the degrees of a minimal uh, homogeneous generating set of the Cox ring, or let's say of the of a homogeneous generating set. And we can say that the degrees of these homogeneous elements are uh, either classes of minus two curves, we know that these are necessary, as I said before, or sums of at most three elements 
of the Hilbert basis of the Neff cone. Let me explain uh, this a little bit more. So what is the Neff cone? So the Neff cone uh, is the dual of the effective cone with respect to the intersection product. So in other words, they are the classes. Uh, I also, we are also seeing it in CL of X tensor Q. They are the classes there uh, whose intersection with the all effective uh, divisor is non-negative. Intersection with respect to the intersection product. Okay, and this generates this uh, uh, cone, so the, the dual cone of, uh, of the effective cone. Um, the Hilbert basis of the cone is a, a, a minimal generating set of the intersection of the cone with the underlying lattice. So this generates uh, Neff cone intersected with C of L of X in the sense that any uh, element here is a linear combination with non-negative integer coefficients of elements of this Hilbert basis. Okay, this is known to, to exist. And um, well, if the, if the cone is um, pointed, as, as happens in this case, it is uh, unique. Okay, it's the Hilbert basis. Um, so they can be sums of the, at most three elements of the either basis of the Neff cone, allowing repetitions. So it could sum the same three times. Or uh, they have this, this, this shape, they are twice the sum uh, of two elliptic curves uh, on the surface intersecting in two points. So something quite, quite special. Okay, so the degrees of a, a minimal homogeneous um, generating set of the coxing are uh, of this type. Observe that this result does not require the X to be a um, uh, more dream surface. So it does not require it to be, to the Cox ring to be finitely generated. So this result is, is, is for any K3 surface. In case that the Cox ring is finitely generated, all these classes are known to be finite. <clears throat> there are finitely many minus two curves. These are the stream arrays of the <clears throat> effective cone, which is polyhedral. Uh, the Neff cone is also polyhedral, so it's uh, the dual of the effective cone. So this Hilbert basis is a finite set in that case. And also it is known that uh, the, there are finitely many elliptic uh, uh, curves on the surface under this, uh, this hypothesis. <clears throat> so um, in case X is more a dream, this provides a finite set uh, where one can look for a minimal um, uh, generating set. <clears throat> um, here I, I had a remark. I, I no, probably so the, the three the three remarks here are that uh, we don't need X to be more dream. Uh, the set is finite if the K3 uh, surface is more dream. And the interesting thing is that we expect the result to this result to be. Um, that could be applied to other classes of, uh, of varieties. Um, so I think I have some 10 more minutes or something like this. No, you have uh, actually uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So let me try to give an idea of the proof of, of this result. So there is no, uh, maybe there's yes. no restriction on the self intersection of these two elliptic curves, just. No, the, the fact that they are elliptic curves by the genus formula implies that their self-intersection is zero. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, roughly the idea is quite technical, but um, there is a main ingredient here, which is the use of certain uh, exact sequences of shifts, which are called causal type sequences. Um, let me show the easiest example. So uh, assume you take two effective divisors, 
it, this holds uh, for any um, projective, smooth projective surf, uh, variety actually over C, but let's think we are on the, on the K3 surface. Take two effective divisors whose intersection is empty and call F1, F2 their defining section. What are the defining section? Uh, I just mean that, for example, F1 is uh, an element here. And uh, we can take it just to be, since A1 is, uh, is effective, just take it to be one, the constant one there. Okay, the constant rational function. By this, I mean a defining section. Then uh, there is an exact sequence uh, of shifts, a short exact sequence as, as follows. Uh, so the map phi takes a pair uh, of elements G1, G2. In, in, here I'm writing it locally, G1, G2, section of those shifts. And I take it due to this combination, which belongs to, is a section of this, since uh, um, G1, uh, is here and F1 is there. So when I take the product, it lies in OX of uh, minus E1 plus E1, which is just OX. Okay, this extra sequence is, is something um, basic. It appears, for example, in the in the first pages of the book on uh, on uh, surfaces by Bovin. Okay, but already it's interesting because um, now take some divisor D and uh, tensor the previous exact sequence with this sheaf, okay? It remains um, exact. And we can pass to the large uh, sequence in cohomology. And look at the following. If, if we look here at this part, we take, we have the direct sum of these two H0. Then we have a map to H0 of XD, since I tensor with D. And then the next term is the H1 of, of this, this group. Observe that this H0 uh, is nothing but, uh, this is the same as isomorphic to, to this. So this is one of the homogeneous pieces of the Cox ring and the same here. Okay, so an easy remark is that if this cohomology group H1 vanishes, then the map phi star is surjective. But if this map is surjective, what, what does it mean that, uh, so the, recall that the map is defined in this way. If the map is surjective, it means that any element of this homogeneous piece can be written using, as a, as a polynomial, using sections in the, these other degrees. So this means that we don't need to put generators in this degree because they are, can be expressed as other in terms of other elements, homogeneous elements. Okay. So this basic remark allows us to uh, eliminate uh, the class of D uh, among the degrees of the generator. So we don't look, uh, if this is surjective, we, we don't need generators in this degree. So we kind of discard degrees in this in this way. So it turns out that this this uh, uh, remark is too weak, so it is not enough to to conclude to prove the theorem. So what we did is just generalize this um, to the case where we have three effective divisors. So it is just again the same idea, but with three effective divisors. Uh, now we assume the three to have empty intersection. And so this condition is much easier to be obtained. And again, we take a similar causal sequence. And uh, again, one obtains a criterion for the subjectivity of this map, this times with three uh, pieces, in terms of some cohomology vanishings. And this, the cohomology, cohomology vanishings are the vanishing of some H1 uh, of this, D minus AI EJ, and uh, this one. Okay, so we can say that uh, we don't need generators in degree D if uh, these two, if you can find A1, A2, A3 under this hypothesis such that these two uh, cohomology group, groups vanish. This is the key point. Um, given this, um, 
let me say that the, the theory of linear systems uh, uh, of K3 surfaces is very well understood. They are classical results, results by Mayer and Sandona. For example, it is known that if I have an F divisor, then the H1 is always zero except for some special exceptions. So multiple of an elliptic linear equivalent to a multiple of a, an elliptic curve. Uh, also, we know very well the structure of the base locus of NEF uh, divisors. So we know that the NEF divisor is almost always base point free unless it has a very special structure. I'm not going to, into this. Okay. So these two ingredients, these causal sequences and this uh, information on uh, cohomology and base locus of NEF divisors allow us to conclude. So the the point essentially is, first of all, uh, one can prove that uh, except for minus two curves, for classes of minus two curves, it is enough to look at classes of NEF uh, divisors when we look for generators of the Cox ring. And now uh, the point is that um, assume a certain um, divisor is the sum of at least four uh, classes in the Hilbert basis of the NEF cone. So it can be written as the sum of four uh, NEF classes. Then if for this D, if one looks at these two cohomology, cohomology vanishings, one finds the following. If, if uh, using these Ni's, uh, one obtains the H1 of D minus Ni minus Nj. Well, this remains NEF because if I leave out two of them, what remains is still a sum of NEF divisors. It's still NEF. And so up to some exceptions, it is still zero. It is zero. And similarly, if I take this H2, uh, well, by ser duality, it is an H1 of uh, this sum minus D. Well, one sees that it is the H0 of mi minus this. And since I have at least four, there is at least some divisor here. And uh, since this is the opposite of an F divisor, one sees that H0 must be zero. Okay. So up to some exceptions, um, the two vanishing are realized because we know they are um, cohomology of NF divisors. And the only uh, kind of more technical point is to obtain the condition that these uh, NEF divisor have empty intersection, okay? But this can be treated, let's say, uh, because we know base loci of uh, NEF divisors, okay? Um, and that's all because, uh, so if we, if you obtain, if we can assume that uh, these NIs have, uh, three of them have empty intersection, we have this cohomology vanishing, we can apply the previous proposition and obtain that we don't need uh, generators in degree D. So if D is the sum of uh, at least four elements in the Hilbert basis, we can uh, throw, throw it away. Okay, this is the idea of the proof. Uh, to conclude, let me, let me just say that together with Claudia uh, Correa, Antonio Laface, and later with uh, Xavier Rollo, we apply this technique to compute uh, explicitly the degrees uh, of um, generators of the Cox ring for Moridrin K3 surfaces with VCAR number three and four. And um, we almost all the time we obtain that uh, the, we can prove that the set of generators is minimal except some, some cases. So what we, what we get is a kind of big tables. For example, for PICAR number three, there are uh, 26 families of uh, K3 surfaces with, um, which are moridrin. Um, each of them represented by a lattice, as I said before. And here in the table, we have the list of, uh, of generators where, well, the notation is a bit different. For example, here, this E means the classes of uh, minus two curves, and this B nef means the Hilbert basis of the nef cone. Okay, and so we have, uh, except in the cases where we have stars, we, we found the minimal, the degrees of a minimal set of, uh, of generators. Maybe for Picard number four is, is even better to, 
Um, okay. Um, we, we observe that all the cases in the theorem, all possible degrees in the theorem actually do appear. So it is not, uh, there are, it is optimal in some sense, the result uh, on the degrees of the generators. Uh, look at what, what happens in, the, in this family here. We cannot say, um, we could not find a minimal uh, set, but we know that uh, the, the, the Cox ring has at least 71 degrees. So it can be something really very, very big. For this reason, um, we expect that, uh, mm, I mean, this type of results, which kind of bounce the degree of the generators, uh, is, a good, uh, is a good strategy because uh, since the, there are so many generators, we expect so many generators, it doesn't, probably doesn't much uh, make sense to look for a theoretical uh, proof uh, to find a presentation. So the idea is to, to use computational tools. So first bound the degrees and then um, kind of filter them, uh, analyze them to get a, a minimal generating set. Actually, to, for obtaining these, these, these tables, we used the several magma libraries. We wrote several magma libraries. Um, uh, one in, uh, to, to deal, well, one to, to find the set of minus two curves, implementing an algorithm which, which was already known by Wimber, uh, to compute the NEF cone by duality. So once we have minus two curves, we generate the effective cone, and then we compute the NEF cone by duality uh, to construct the Hilbert basis of the NEF cone and to uh, thus to analyze this list of NEF classes of this type. And finally, um, we wrote also a library to, um, to prove the minimality of, uh, of certain degrees. This kind of different problem, I'm not going into this. But um, with these tools, we were able to kind of get the tables I showed before. Of course, we expect the technique to be used also for a higher Picard number, but the computation become more, more difficult. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. Um, well, this is an example, but I don't have time. So these are some, some references on the... Okay, thank you, Michela. Uh, any question?